Hello everyone. Let us see how to implement CNN architecture for lung disease. So first of all, I am going to take the input file. I am going to take the input file from UCL, UCI machine learning repository. This is the URL and lung cancer data is available in this website and it has uh, 32 instances and 56 attributes. These are 56 are the number of columns and 32 is the number of rows. And when I downloaded the data, when I downloaded the data, data looks something like this. Data looks something like this. It will have, I have taken it as a TXT file. So 56 columns and 32 rows are there. Columns are the attributes and rows are the instances. Instances means time. Attributes means just like features. So I have applied some data augmentation techniques in order to increase the number of uh, data is very small. So I want to increase it. There are many methods for data augmentation. There are many methods for data augmentation. And in that you can see if you have images, you can rotate the images, add them. So you have one image. If the data is very small, you can rotate the image and add all of them. So the data size will become big. It may be car or letters, something like that. Data augmentation. We have different methods. Flipping we can do upside, right side, left vertical down, flipping. This is flipping operation. And then <clears throat> rotation we can do, which is part of data augmentation. And then scaling we can do. Crop, cropping the image we can do. Translation we can do. All these are data augmentation process. So for that, what I have done, that 56 rows and 32 columns, I have copy pasted, which is similar to addition. So thereby I have increased the data size. <coughs> I have increased the data size. This is the file I am finally using it. This is the file I am finally using it. So entirely copy paste mm, the same 56 by 32. I have taken two times, just multi, uh, one more time I have added. So same 56 columns, but 64 rows, something will be there. So just a simple augmentation I have done and I am going to use that file for the entire process. And here this is the coding. I am taking the txt file into the Python window. I am executing with Jupyter uh, Anaconda Python coding. And after that, after importing the file, I am going with 80% uh, training and 20% testing. In this line, 80% training and 20% testing. And also I have uh, reshaped the data so that it is suitable for the CNN architecture. Then I'm going with this architecture. This is my architecture. I will show you how my CNN architecture is. This is my CNN architecture. I am using one convolution layer one fully connected or dense layer, next max pooling layer, flatten layer, and again one more dense layer. So initially before the flatten layer, it is uh, completely contributing for the feature extraction and the flatten and the output side dense layer, these two comes with the classification process. And uh, in deep learning, CNN is a deep learning method. In deep learning, no separate feature extraction required. Feature extraction plus classification will be done inside the deep learning architecture. This combined is CNN convolution neural network architecture. I'm going to do lung data TXT file. Final classification will be done. And uh, this is the output I'm getting in Python window. This is the output I'm getting in Python window. As I told you, one CNN uh, convolution layer, then fully connected dense layer, max pooling, flatten, again dense layer. And Adam optimizer and loss spares categorical cross entropy I am using. And only accuracy is the metrics I am concentrating. This is the Python window summary I am getting for the CNN file. Summary of the Python window CNN architecture. And here I have, uh, you can see in the architecture I framed 64 filters and filter size 2 by 2. Uh, and then activation um, is ReLU function. And then 56 by 1 is the input. I am using flatten layer. And what all these layers will do, uh, the convolution layer, it do the convolution operation. Pooling layer, it will decrease the dimension by approximating neighborhood values to a single value. Flatten layer, it will transform a two-dimensional matrix into a single matrix. And that's how 56 by 1 is my input size. Input size 56 by 1. So I am um, taking inside. Then fully connected layer, it will um, soft max or there are many types of op, um, activation. Activation. 
uh, layers softmax is the activation layer i am using in the cnn architecture and uh, it will uh, generate the features of the input size into various classes based on the training set these are the functions of different layers and in the sum summary i am having uh, none 55 64 in the python window summary first line i am having none 55 64 64 is the number of filters and uh, 56 56 uh, is the number of columns in input how this 55 is coming there is a formula for the output size it is um, the total number of columns minus 3 plus 1 number of columns minus 3 plus 1 which will come as 55 that's how the size in the convolution layer in the python window is coming first line 55 is coming like that and the pooling layer the formula these are the parameters trainable non-trainable parameters and these parameters will come uh, in the pooling layer in the dense layer it will be in the dense layer it will be current layer output size is 16 into previous layer output size plus 1 so previous layer output size 64 plus 1 so 16 into 64 plus 1 it will come 1040 that calculations is written here this will happen in the dense layer max pooling layer it will not give any learning so the number of parameters will be zero max layer we are using the filter size 2 by 2 kernel or filter size 2 by 2 and that's how it is getting divided by 2 and the previous layer 55 is there divided by 2 uh, this 27 will come and then training parameter zero no learning takes place in the max layer or flatten layer and the flatten layer size 432 it is coming and then dense layer <clears throat> dense layer again it is calculated as present layer output 3 into previous layer plus 1 previous layer 432 plus 1 so if we follow that calculations we are having 3 into 432 plus 1 which is 1299 we are getting in the python window number of parameters and then what i have the flattened layer it is converting to one dimensional vector at the bottom of the summary we have trainable non-trainable parameters in the python python window bottom of the summary we are having trainable parameters non-trainable parameters so trainable parameters means there is some learning taking place non-trainable parameters means no learning in the pooling layer flatten layer no learning is taking place hence in the summary we are getting zero zero in that in other layers there is learning of the architecture and then thereby it will give the uh, output and now we are model fitting the model we are fitting the model we are using validation 0.1 which means 10 percent validation so i told you actual data we are dividing into 80 and 20 80 percent for uh, training and 20 percent for testing in the training in the training 80 percent again we are dividing this 80 percent into 90 and 10 90 is for training and validation is 10 percent and this 10 percent is written as 0.1 in the model fitting so out of the 80 percent data again it is divided as 90 percent training and then 10 percent for validation and here once the model is fitting it is uh, we are using uh, 100 iterations epoch means iterations you can see here in the execution step number seven in the beginning accuracy is going something like three then it is increasing to 18 48 55 81 in the sixth epoch it is increasing to 81 from seventh epochs it is increasing above 90 from the seventh epoch you can see epoch means uh, iterations so 100 iterations we are fixing so accuracy it is increasing above the uh, 90 and finally when we see 100 uh, iterations it is above uh, 90 uh, after the fifth or sixth iteration and when all the average is done accuracy is coming as 96.66 this is the absolute value when we convert to percentage into 100 we have to do so this is 96.66 percent loss is 4 percent 100 minus uh, 96 is 4 percent loss take, uh, taking place and then we are taking the graphs training accuracy validation accuracy and uh, training loss validation loss in the literature in the survey papers in the literature papers everywhere any work you see if there are graphs accuracy should be increasing graph and loss should be decreasing graph only then the model designed is correct so we are getting that 96 percent in the training accuracy this dark line is training accuracy 96 percent is there validation accuracy it is coming 1.0 validation we are using only 10 percent data training we are using 90 percent data from the 80 percent of for total training so hence the training is below validation very less data so it is going above in the loss loss should be a decreasing graph accuracy should be increasing graph loss should be decreasing graph we are getting as per the literature so our model design is correct if you see the training loss is above 
and validation loss is below. So validation loss only 10% data, so it is very less accuracy uh, higher than the training and the loss is lesser than the loss is lesser. Loss is below. Loss is below the validation loss is below the training loss. Now I am going with the training and testing. Training and testing. We are using 80% training and 20% testing. And here you can see testing 20%, very small data. So both the accuracies are increasing. This is uh, training accuracy, testing accuracy. Both the graphs are increasing. And uh, training is 80%, testing is 20%. So the graph of testing is above. Little data, so it comes above. So all this I have included in the PPT also. And we are getting the uh, point step number 17. Model fitting, I have included. These are the initial epochs, oh, these are the final epochs, 100 epochs, 100 titration. We are getting at, at um, nearly 96 and that is written here. And the graphs I have explained from the Python window, it is included in the PPT. And in the conclusion, finally, the from ML algorithms, we got 87. From the deep learning algorithm, we got 96.66% um, accuracy. We are concentrating accuracy parameter. I have also copied one more file. I have also copied one more file. Now, step 17, I have copied it separately because it, it may not be visible. So I have a screenshot copied it separately. You can zoom and check it. So 1 to 7th iteration, the accuracy is less, 3%, 48%, 18%, 48%, 55 Then from the 7th epoch, it is above the 92%. This, uh, this is not visible in one shot. In the PDF, I have taken. But in the Python window, we can scroll and see it. In the Python window, I have scrolled and showed you the... Here, I can scroll and see all the 100 epochs. But when I take PDF, only one thing can be visible. Only the last epoch I have kept in the uh, PPT. Uh, but in this, separately I have copied from 1st to 7th epoch, then 8th to 10th uh, epoch, 16th epoch, then 25. How the accuracy is increasing and loss also we can see. On an average, when the final average is done, we are getting in the Python window, accuracy 96.66%, loss is 4% loss is 4 percent so this is about cnn implementation uh, for lung cancer lung cancer lung disease and then we are getting 96 percent uci machine learning repository is the database where we are taking the lung related data url is represented in the ppt url is given link is given where the input data is taken it is available in the ppt itself UCI ML machine learning repository is the website. This is the website. If we click on this link, URL link, it will go to that website. With this, I am closing the CNN uh, implementation in Python with an accuracy 96.66%. Thank you.